So first, we're going to need to install NF tables. So I'm going to use uh, apt install. I'm not going to do an update because I've already done my update in this lab. So I'm just going to install the NF tables package. So that should run. All right, now I've got the NF tables package installed. Now I have to make sure that the service is enabled. So system CTL. I'm going to enable NF tables. All right, now I can check the status of NF tables. And you can see it's enabled. So I'm going to go ahead and start that service. And you can see now it's active and running. So now I'm going to check to see what these firewall rules look like right now. So the firewall rules are going to be in a text file. I'm going to use VI to take a look at that text file. So we're going to look at Etsy, and then there should be an nftables.conf file. And here it is. So really not much is going on in here. There's nothing set up in here yet. So we have three chains in my PowerPoint. I think I discussed what these three chains are and how they work. You have an input chain, a forward chain, and an output chain. So the input chain is for evaluating uh, network traffic coming into the system. If that traffic is destined for the system itself, uh, then it's going to, you know, the input's going to allow that traffic in, and it's going to go through whatever process, and then it's going to go to an output chain. So I can create rules that filter traffic coming from my system with an output chain. Now, some traffic is just transiting through the system. For example, if it's operating as a router, and that's where you would put rules related to the forward chain. So if it never gets processed, so it's not traffic that's being generated from the system, it's traffic that came through the input chain. It's now going directly out, so that'll be uh, through an output chain. So we're going to need to edit this file. I'm just going to go ahead and quit from VI. Uh, we're going to have to edit this file. Now, the easy way to edit these files, I showed you how to use uh, Notepad++, um, but you have to get the file in a spot that you can access it. Um, so I'm going to use uh, the cp command to copy that file. Let's see. And if, by the way, I'm using tab to autocomplete. Um, and I'm going to put it in my home directory. I'm just going to call it nftables.conf. There we go. So now if I open up over here, I've connected already to my um, to my system. I'm going to open up nftables.conf. And you can see here, uh, it's the same file, right? So I'm going to make my edits in here. I'm just going to go ahead and delete everything here. And I'm going to paste in. I already have it in my, uh, in my clipboard. So what we're doing now under this input chain, so we're setting a default policy where it's going to drop all packets. So if it doesn't know what else to do, it's just going to drop everything. That's the default policy. Um, this line right here is allowing all loopback traffic. So if it's something that's 127.0.0.1 or local host, it's going to ignore this drop and it's going to go ahead and just accept that traffic because it's coming from the same machine. We're also going to allow any established or related traffic. So if we already have an established connection, um, then it's going to go ahead and allow that traffic. And then right here, this is where we're going to reject anything coming in on port 8080. So anything that's coming through the input chain on 8080 is going to get rejected. But I'm also going to explicitly allow port 22. You can see up here, we're dropping all traffic. So if I didn't allow port 22, SSH would stop working, right? We don't want that. We want to make sure we can still SSH to our machine. So definitely make sure that this part right here uh, is set up and working. So one little hiccup here, you can see that it's uh, Notepad++ is not able to upload the file. Uh, that's because I forgot to set the permissions. Um, so because root owns NF tables, it's not allowing student to overwrite that file, uh, even though we copied it. So I have to change the ownership to student. As long as I do that, so you can run this command to change the ownership. I talked about that command just a little bit in the intro. Um, now I should be able to come back over here, reload the file. And I'm going to paste back in that code. So it's going to reject port 8080. Now the file saved, right? Because the permissions are correct. Now I can use the sudo command to copy that file back into um, the real config file. 
So we're going to do a copy. It's going to the source is going to be nftables.conf, and we're going to send it into Etsy forward slash nftables.conf. And I'm just going to double check uh, using the ll command on the Etsy directory. We should be able to see that that file here, nftables, right here, and it's still owned by root, so that's good uh, since we use the sudo command. All right, now we've done that. So if I, uh, I'm just gonna just to prove that we updated it. Oops, look at Etsy. So there's the new version of that file. Now it doesn't just use it. We have to tell the system to go ahead and start using this new version of the config file, right? We have to reload these firewall rules. So to do that, you're gonna use the NFT command, uh, dash F, which basically means to flush the current rules and reload them. And I'm gonna point it to that new file. So that should have reloaded the rules. We can verify that it's running on these rules by using the list rule set. So looking at list rule set command, now notice it doesn't show me all the comments here. It's only showing you what it's actually doing, right? So in the config file itself, we've got some comments in here so we know what it's doing. This really kind of helps give us some clarity, you know, when we're looking at these types of config files. But when I just show what the rule set is that it's running off of for the input chain, you can see it just has the, the raw rules listed here. Um, so the config file is sometimes a little bit easier to read when you have a lot of complicated rules. But now we should be rejecting port 8080. So now I should be able to confirm that this uh, service is not working, so or is not uh, going to allow traffic. So I'm going to run that uh, netcat command. We're going to listen on port 8080. So that's running. I'm going to come over here. I'm going to try to connect on 8080, and you can see it says connection refused. So that worked. It refused the connection. Now I want to show you something a little bit different here. You don't have to do this in, in your lab unless you want to kind of play around with this. But instead of accepting what, or instead of rejecting rather, what if I drop the traffic instead, right? If I just drop that traffic. And I can do that. I'm going to use VI to edit that file. So let's edit Etsy forward slash NF tables. And all I'm going to do is uh, I am going to comment out this line right here. So if I comment this line, it's no longer going to reject 8080. Instead, it's going to follow the default behavior, which is up here, where it's going to drop. So let me go ahead and save that. So now we're going to drop traffic instead of rejecting, instead of actively rejecting. When we do that, that means when the client over here connects, Netcat may, oh, I forgot I have to reload the, uh, we have to flush our, rules and reload them and if you want to check that uh, you know sometimes it's good to double check that it's actually using the new rules which it is here you can see it disappeared that rejection it's just going to do drop on everything the only thing that's going to get accepted here is port 22. i'm going to come back over here and run my netcat command come over here and try to connect and instead of getting connection refused now it thinks it connected right it's sending traffic i'm typing stuff here but if i come back over here there should be nothing happening because the, the, the traffic's just getting dropped. So it's getting silently dropped. It's not actively saying, hey, I'm refusing this connection. Um, it's just dropping it, right? So eventually this client will time out realizing that, hey, I'm not getting any acknowledgements on any of these packets that I'm sending or any of these segments that I'm sending. Um, so that's kind of the difference between accept and or reject and drop, right? So three different operations. Uh, one of them's kind of silent. The other one's active, saying, I'm not taking this connection. The other one is it's just never able to get there, the traffic. All right, so that worked. So go ahead and move on to the next step.